Hey there! This is the third tutorial on how to make Minecraft in Flash, and you probably wouldn't understand this if you're just joining now, so you can go to the other tutorials first if you haven't seen them. Um, because this is our script right now, it's kind of complex, so you probably wouldn't understand it. Might need a little look through. And this is what we have so far. We have a quick world generator that just makes sloped land. And that's pretty cool. I mean, that'll work for right now. And it looks okay. So, we have... All, all we have right now is we have dirt at the very top, and then underneath it's a bunch of rock. Now we want to make it so that there's dirt randomly spread out from like four blocks, five blocks down. So we can do this simply by um, changing a couple things in our script. And it, right here you can see this is where our world is actually drawing out pretty much. So if it's if the position the y position which is up and down, if it's at the very top, then put dirt. If it isn't at the very top, then I'll put rock. As you can see, if it's at the top, it's dirt. If it isn't, put rock. So we want to make it so that if the y position is close to the top, then we'll also put dirt. So we can say, if the y position is greater than the top of the world, minus a couple, this is what it is. It changes it to make it look like that. So if the y position is greater than the top of the world, up greater than the top of the world, minus a couple, which is right here, up, then it will add dirt. It's pretty simple. And we might want to randomize it, too, to make it look a little more natural. So, And if a random number, oops, random number, um, 0 through 2, if that is not equal to 1, so it can either be 0 or 2, it can't be 1, then add dirt or else just put rock. So we just have it randomly say if it's... Um, if the y position is greater than or equal to the top of the world, minus 3, and a random number is true, then do it. So it has a two-thirds chance of being dirt underneath like that. It's pretty simple. We need to add coal. Stuff like that. That'd be cool. Um... And we can just add it with the block type here. We can just add a new frame. We'll go under uh, Properties, click on the frame, and we can name it Coal. Now this is the Coal frame. This is what Coal would look like. We'd select it so that we could see it. We're gonna make it stone. And just add a poorly drawn Coal. Fill it in. There's our coal, just a simple block. Um, also, I'm going to remove the borders here, just because it looks ugly with a bunch of grid lines everywhere. And this is the air block. It's supposed to be invisible. So what we'll do is we'll just make an invisible color, which would be white with alpha zero. Alpha zero. And we'll just fill it in here. And now this block inside is invisible. So we can still click on it if we want to put bl place blocks and stuff. We can still click on it, but we don't have to see anything. And we can see right through it if you, if I change the um, background color. We can see right through it even though it's there. We can change the background color to a nice light blue. And there we have a very nice background without grids everywhere. Um... So I think we're looking pretty good. We need to add coal though. So since we have coal here, we just need to put it in our script. And as you can see, we can just put coal wherever rock is. It can either be rock or coal. More rock than coal, obviously. So what we do is where we place rock right here, we can say if 
has a 1 in 100 chance to be cold. So if a random number, 0 through 99, is equal to 1, then we'll add cold. We'll make it cold. If it isn't coal, then we don't want to make it rock. So if it isn't a random number, if this isn't true right here, then we'll just make it rock. So we'll see, we'll have randomly spread out coals everywhere. Pretty neat. Fortunately, I colored the background of the coal wrong. Yeah, that should work. That looks better. So now we have coal. And now we can save our work and have all that saved in case we forget or mess up. And this is great because now we have coal and the ability to do iron and cool stuff like that. So now we need to be able to mine blocks or to be able to place blocks. So we'll focus on placing blocks. Now block is what we click on usually. This is what we click on. Block types is just what they look like pretty much. That's what you can say or what they do individually. Block is just like the overall what's going to happen for the block. And this just goes for all of the block types pretty much. And I noticed that I forgot in the other video to tell the block, to tell each block, um, it's X and Y, like it's actual, um, it's actual X and Y values in the world. Like it, it doesn't have, like, I'll show you, it doesn't say like that's block 1, 1, that's block 10, 20 or whatever. Um, doesn't say any of that, so it can't really access its its value that easily. So we can just tell it to give it um, x and y like this. We can say temp, which is um, temporarily storing the block. Temp dot um, block x equals, and we'll use this right here, x. So its x is its x. And we'll do the same for y. And that's the y right there. And I know some people don't like that the fact that this is blue. Like, it does something important. But really, it doesn't do much important. You can use it as a variable like this, too. It's not going to affect anything. There's no problems with it. I kind of go, got over that a while ago. But it did annoy me. And You can always make this i and j, if you feel like, instead of x and y. But I guess for tutorial purposes, it's really easy to understand. I mean, but there's no problem with X and Y like that. So, so now our, so now block right here. Every block knows its X and Y. So we can say trace X, uh, block X, um, and now it will trace all their block X's here. Which you'll notice that there's going to be like 30, 40 of each. It's pretty. Um, Self-explanatory, I guess. It knows it's block X now. If I didn't have it, it would chase under fine. So, we need to make it so that when you click on it, it changes it. Like, if it's invisible, if it's air, if it's undefined, if it doesn't, if it's not rock, if it's not dirt, if it's not coal, then we want to change it to, um, let's say, dirt for now. So, when we click on it, on release, which this is a little bit different than buttons, on release equals function. Now that's for movie clips. This is what a button would look like. A little shorter, but this is for like movie clips, like in timelines and stuff. So when you release on it, um, let's say, well, we want to change it to, um, we want to change it to. Um, dirt. So, and I'm getting block type right here, obviously from this, which is the block type, and the block type which we've seen holds the rock, and the dirt, and the coal, and the air. And 
so we're just telling it to go to and stop dirt when we click on it. Which when we run it, they all turn into dirt when we click on them. Now we have a simple drawing program. It's not really good, but it's what it is so far. So now we have every block turn into dirt, but we just want to have it when it's air we want it to turn into dirt. So we'll say if root.scene, which is where we hold our, all our data, if you remember, if root.scene, and we'll just put in its x and y values that it already knows, block x and block y. So it already knows block x and block y. And we'll just access what it is. So if we trace this, if we trace this right here, we can um, trace if it's dirt, rock, coal, air, under, under, undefined, which is air. So when we click on it, we'll see that it's what... So I'm going to click on coal, and it says it's coal. I'll click on air, it'll say undefined. Click on dirt, it'll say D for dirt. Or a rock, we'll say R. So it knows what it is. It's pretty easy. So we'll say if if its block type is equal to undefined, so if it's air, and that's what's undefined is because it doesn't have anything, it's just undefined. If it is air, then we want to turn it into dirt. And you'll see that if it's air, it will turn into dirt. If it isn't, it won't do anything. There. Now, it's good enough that we have it where it changes it into dirt. And that's cool. And we have it look like it turns into dirt. But the data in root.scene, all that data in here isn't changing at all. We're not saying, we're not changing it into dirt. So all we do is we can say root.scene and put the block x and block y here. And we'll just tell it that it is now dirt. So we can we can say um, we'll just make a temporary um, variable name before, and we'll just say before equals. This is just for showing you what's going on. Say before equals that, and then we'll trace what it was before. And we'll um, trace what it is now. And it'll just say, it'll say it's block before it was changed. And then it'll show you when it's after, just to show you what it looks like. So when I click on it, when I click on an air block, it'll say undefined to dirt. I can't click on any of this because it it's not undefined. We said if it's undefined, only do that. And so now we're just tracing if it's changed. So when we click on, it's not helpful. We click on air, it'll turn into dirt. And it'll, that's just showing that um, the scene is now updating, which is pretty cool. Now that's just really simply what we have here. We have a simple Minecraft-like drawing program. Doesn't really do much right now just make simple little floating brick sculptures or whatever blah 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 and in the next tutorial I'm I'm thinking about doing trees um, and well I don't know yet but I think we're gonna do trees and we're gonna be mining blocks and stuff um, it's a slow process there's a lot to learn and I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial. I'll have the download link for this on in the description so you can see what we have and you can mess around with it. And that's the end of this tutorial.